Hi, Integral Man here. And so I'm back with Electrical Engineering Lab Tour. Now I did this around three years ago, but uh, a lot of things have changed since then and uh, of course the recording quality has gotten much better. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so starting from the beginning, and now this is an important note. I can actually talk for a long time about everything here. They've got a lot of backstories, but um, I'm actually gonna split these up into separate videos that detail them individually so that you guys won't get bored of me talking. So this is gonna be just an overview, but it's still pretty cool, so I encourage you guys to watch on. So starting here, I have, of course, the engineer's favorite tool, the hot glue gun. But I also have a lot of other adhesives like epoxies, uh, resins, clear cast, and of course the uh, very popular single edge blade, stuff like that. Of course I have the measuring microscope, I'll go over this a bit later, uh, but this basically measures in three dimensions. Uh, in terms of hardware, here I have anything from torches. So I actually have uh, two small torches. This is a uh, actually a creme brulee torch, but it's actually really useful for a lot of other stuff. Um, and of course I have the pencil torch. The pencil torch burns a lot hotter, you can tell by the color of the flame. And this is more useful for uh, melting small pieces of glass and stuff like that. Um, okay, and so we actually have some other stuff here like solder, uh, a little bit of solder, some tape, of course duct tape is in here. Uh, glue sticks and wire jumper, those are very important. And of course, safety first, these are my Google glasses. Now these are not digitized, nor are they worth $2,000, but they are safety glasses made by Google and they have a lot of them. Okay, so moving over to the most popular uh, electronics engineer tool, and this is an SMD rework station. And to be brief, this basically has a soldering iron, uh, and it has a basically a turbo hair dryer and uh, it acts the same way as your hair dryer except I don't think your hair dryer goes up to 480 degrees Celsius. If it does, you should probably see somebody about it. So over here, to be brief, we have a function generator. This was donated to me, as you can see, it's a bit older. Basically it creates pulses ranging anywhere from five times per second to five million times per second, so really cool. Uh, we have a uh, laboratory power bench, uh, laboratory power supply. This basically gives you a lot of voltages, any sort of voltage you want at, uh, well, within a reasonable range around uh, zero to 60 volts. And basically all the uh, currents you want around from zero to 10 amps, so 600 watts total power, really, really useful. It also has a phantom feature, it doesn't turn off when you turn off. Uh, it actually waits a bit, which is kind of creepy. Okay, so now we go to the crown jewel of the lab, basically, and this is a Siglent oscilloscope. Now, I can't afford those name brands like Rigel. You know how, uh, how expensive those are. Uh, this was actually $200, and this has all the bells and whistles I could possibly want. It goes up to 50 megahertz, so it's really, really nice. It does everything an oscilloscope does. I'll go over this in a different video. Okay, so up here we have my wires. Now, I used to have these in a drawer, but uh, ever since I went to an electrical engineer shop, basically, I saw how they were mounted to the wall like this, so I made my own. Basically, a piece of aluminum through the centers, and it's really, really nice. Um, over here, I have some alligator clips. Over here, I have a desoldering gun. Uh, over here, I have some more wires and probes and all that cool stuff. And over here, I have all the tools of the trade, basically. I have some needle nose pliers right here. I have some flush cutters. Those are used when you want to trim off some odds ends and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, I have the small hammer because hammer. So now we talk about some of the more component stuff. Uh, if we just look on the big picture, we have anything from uh, capacitors, resistors, inductors, um, integrated circuits, all that cool stuff. But uh, it's really, really hard to see them right now, so we're actually going to put them out on the table for you. So I've, I've taken a few component drawers out of this so uh, we can actually get a broad taste of what I have in here. We have some resistors, uh, we have some capacitors, and we have some inductors. So the LRC, really, really nice, governed by Maxwell's equations and all the cool stuff we'll talk about later. Uh, these are any 555 timers, so the bread and butter of electrical engineers. Uh, they're the timer chip. This is an LM358, an operational amplifier. Again, we'll talk about the theory a bit later. These are surface-mounted resistors. Now, they're really, really tiny, so that's why I typically use microscopes and the SMD rework station to work with these, but it's nice to know. Um, these are some of my larger chips I have. Uh, they really don't serve much of a purpose. I have some old Intel CPUs. Uh, I have actually a Sun Microsystem chip here, so this is actually quite a collection. Um, and of course I have the AT Mega 328 chip. Now you might not uh, know this as much as the uh, 555 or the 358, but this is actually the chip they use in the Arduino. And I use this a lot for prototyping anything. I need uh, programmable chips, so really useful stuff. 
And with that, we'll move over to this side. And this side is where all the warehouse stuff is. So a lot of the miscellaneous components, not as nitty gritty as this stuff. So I've taken a few drawers out of that storage container. Uh, this does not represent my entire collection, but this represents a lot of the important stuff you need to know. And a lot of this stuff was actually taken from old computers, old hardware. But so from here, we have diodes. Diodes basically allow current to go in one direction. We have here some inductors. Now, those are a bit different from the inductors I talked about over here. They're much larger, and they're physically built, so that's quite, pretty nice. These are, some, these are some fuses. They're good for limiting current. These are potentiometers, adjustable resistors. These are relays. They control high current, high voltage applications using low voltage signals. Similar idea with these transistors. They're bipolar, not the mental disorder, but uh, a sort of uh, a meaning of the MP junction. Uh, and so these control uh, voltages. These are um, voltage regulators. They're good when you have a bad voltage. You want to convert them into a more stable voltage. These are switches. Uh, so basically switches. You know what switches do. Uh, these are LEDs, very, very useful indicators, all that stuff. And of course, we have oscillators. Now, oscillators are less known, but you might have seen these on any circuit board. They basically are uh, essentially a electronic pendulum, and they, they vibrate, they oscillate, uh, giving you a clock signal. All right, so now that we finished talking about some of the stuff in the component drawer, let's talk a bit more big picture. So right here, I have the Dremel, and this is a rotary tool. Uh, basically, it spins a disk or anything you want really quickly. Very useful for small-scale prototyping, cutting things anywhere from metal to carbon fiber. That's actually kind of dangerous, uh, but you can do that if you wanted to. So if you turn this on, you'll get the spinning wheel and everything like that. Over here is my big boy torch, and this is something I typically never use indoors, but it's very good when you want to do something like casting lead ingots or melting aluminum, anything like that. And so, yep, it's really, really uh, powerful. Um, over here I have my Tesla coil. Of course I'll make a video about this. I'm not going to just leave you guys hanging. This is a one Tesla kit that I had to modify for it to work, and it communicates via fiber optic. It's really cool. It plays music, all that stuff. And so we're actually going to finish off by looking under the table. And now all of the stuff under the table was practically donated to me. Uh, and they were actually going to go to the junkyard. So I rescued them. And they're actually really, really cool stuff down here. Now over here is an oscilloscope, uh, old and analog. Uh, and it's not really working, but it's really nice to have. And I do have plans to refurbish them if I have the time. These are amplifier and frequency selectors, uh, uh, basically surplus from an old uh, audio system. These are power supplies, uh, analog versions of what I had on the bench. Uh, this is a decade resistance box, and basically this can have as many, uh, all the resistors from 1 ohm to 999,999. Really, really useful for prototyping as well. We have some microscopes for SMD soldering, something I talked about before. We have a spectrum analyzer, also broken, but also really, really cool because it can analyze stuff theoretically. Uh, and of course, these are prisms made out of stuff like salt and cesium fluoride. Um, there are optics things. I don't really have much of a use for them, but they're very interesting specimens as well. So with that, I will finish up with the lab tour. And please be sure to uh, subscribe, like, and comment. And I will actually put some more spe uh, specific videos out there for like the oscilloscope, the power supply, all that cool stuff, and the stories behind them in separate videos. So thank you for watching.